as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Faber as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. It is such a blessing to be with you today to share God's Word with you. I'm Shantae Hockman, Charlotte Faber's daughter, and it is an honor to be here. Uh, the Lord has laid a spe special message on my heart, and I hope that you will just um, sit back and just enjoy the message of what God is speaking to us today. Um, the Lord has given me a vision, and um, I just want to share it with you, and I hope that it will be a blessing to you and your family. Um, I'm going to speak in Malachi in chapter 3, and many of you know, may know the verses, but my title is The Windows of Heaven, and I believe that God's uh, windows in heaven are open for His children, for us, His believers, and that He wants to bless us, pour out His Spirit upon us, and just uh, bless us in a mighty and a powerful way. Thank you. Hello, I'm Shantae Hockman. There is no greater love than the love from our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We know in John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. In verse 17 it says that God did not come to condemn the world, but to come to love us and to give His life for us. We know in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess that you are saved. God wants you to give your life to him today. He loves you so much. And there is nothing like knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord. He will give you that peace and that joy in your heart that you need. And it's, it promises us that He will give us eternal life. And we know in Ephesians, it says Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. It's nothing that we can do in ourselves and who we are, but this is a gift that God has given to us that we can have eternal life. And it's by His grace and His love. Please pray a prayer with me today and ask Jesus to be your Lord and to be your Savior. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, I come and I ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I ask you to cleanse me and purify me from all sin. I ask you to forgive me for anything, all that I have done. And Lord, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We'll praise the Lord. We know in verse 13 of Romans 9, it says, call upon the Lord and you will be saved. So as you have called upon the Lord today, I believe that you have received Jesus and you have, saved, you have been saved and that you will spend eternity in heaven with me. Well, praise the Lord. Please call or write to us and let us know what God has done for you today. Thank you. I hope that message was a blessing to you. I want to go ahead and get started in the Word of God. And the Lord has laid upon my heart um, in chapter Malachi in chapter 3, that the windows of heaven are opened up for us, God's children. And let's read in verse uh, 10, it says, And I will not... I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I believe that God wants to bless us, his children, with the blessings from heaven. And I know that in this time that we are in right now, that we, we may be facing situations that where we've lost our job or that uh, we just don't have the income that we had or we're just in, in need. But we know that God is our provider, that He provides our every need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we know that God, He owns 
every cattle on every field. He owns everything and he knows your need and he wants to be right there with you today to meet that need that you have. And um, in, uh, in verse 10, it says, Bring ye all the tithes unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. So first, God, he wants us to be obedient to his word. And, and he's asking for us, his children, to give our tithes and our offerings to him. And then it says, prove me that I will bless you so that we can prove God and we can prove uh, the power of God and what he is doing as we are walking in obedience to him. So um, if we will uh, give our tithes, which is our 10% of what we make. So in your job, just 10% of what you make, God is just wanting us to give that back to the church and to his storehouse for his ministry. And then he also, sometimes he'll lay on our heart to give an offering or to give to somebody in need, to the poor, or to, you know, someone that's just um, struggling right now. God wants us to use us to minister to them. And we may think, well, I have a need right now. But as we are obedient to God and we step out and give our 10% to God and give as he tells us to, that he will in turn come and pour out his blessings upon us. And the promise is that he will pour out in our lives more than we can even imagine. Like greater, it says that there will not be room enough to receive. So I just think that is awesome that God wants to bless us, his children, as we are obedient to give to him. But uh, what started this message is uh, the windows of heaven that I was just praying one day and um, I, just, I just saw in a vision that I saw the, the clouds open up and it was like a window of heaven opening up and all I saw was gold. And I know that we know that heaven is a, is a city of gold and that God, um, he owns everything. He's, he has everything that we don't have to lack because of him. But in this vision, I just saw gold and I'm thinking, okay, God, what is, you know, what are you saying? But I immediately thought of this scripture of, of God wanting to open the windows of heaven and pouring out his blessing. And we know there's a scripture that says that God uh, has laid up the, the wealth of the riches uh, for the just, for God's people, that God wants us to uh, be able to have the monies that we need to, to survive, but also an overflowing that we can bless those in need and that we can be a ministry. I, I know if, if we as God's children are blessed, and that we can bless others, that we will have the opportunity as we give, as we provide food for the poor, as we, as that's an opportunity that we have to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, as that God blesses us, that we can bless others. But um, I just believe that um, in this vision, I just saw gold. And I know that um, sometimes we think as gold is money, but we also know that the glory of God is is, is like gold. It's shining and beautiful. And I didn't even realize until yesterday that Jerusalem in Israel is called the city of gold. I didn't even know that. I guess I should have already known that. But I was just reading and I, I saw that they call Jerusalem sometimes the city of gold. And, and I guess it's the buildings and just the reflection. But you think about how we know that heaven is a city of gold, that the streets are paved with gold. And um, but I just wanted to share another thing. I was thinking back uh, when Micah, my son, was in the hospital and had open heart surgery, and we about lost him a couple times. And, um, and he has shared with me that during that time, I don't know if it was when he was an infant or at three, he had another surgery and had a, a, you know, a scary episode where he almost died, but that God raised him up. But I feel like he told me when he was in the hospital that he saw Jesus. And I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, well, you know, what did he look like? Or what, uh, what was your experience with that? And he just said, when I saw Jesus, he was gold. And that was his only description of Jesus. And, and I don't know, it, it could have been, um, you know, an angel reflecting the glory. But he said he saw Jesus and he said the only thing he saw was gold. And that, so we know that the glory of God is bright and beautiful like gold. But we know that God, he is our everything. And it's not about the money. It's not about us being rich. 
but it's about the glory of God and what God wants to do. He not only wants to bless his children with finances, and, but he wants to bless us with health and with freedom in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and to have a, that glory of him upon us that we can walk in his peace and his, and his uh, strength each and every day. And that I believe that God will reflect his glory upon his children as we come to him and spend time in worship and prayer that we can begin to reflect the love of Jesus, that we can reflect the glory of God, that people will be drawn to us in our workplaces, in our schools, wherever we are, that, that people will be drawn to us. And uh, when they have a need, that they'll want to come to you and say, you know, I need prayer for this, or, you know, I need some help in this area. And, and God wants to use us, his children, and not only to be able to uh, to give, but all, in, in finances, but to be able to give and to lead people to the Lord and to allow them to know uh, how God can set them free and bring salvation and healing and peace in their in their lives and in their home. But um, I want to go ahead and read in Malachi in three, and I want to start in um, in verse six. It says, "For I am the Lord; I change not. Therefore, yet." Sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. And it says, Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet, he, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation." And bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that, they, that there may be meat in mine house. And it says again, Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. So we know, first it talks about how the Lord, he never changes. That we know that God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So everything in his word, it reflects who he is and who he was and who he is and who he's going to be. He's always the same. He doesn't change. So we know that we can base our, our life and our direction through the word of God because he doesn't change. And his promises are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, And then it just goes along and it says um, that he's talking to Israel and how that Israel has sinned and, and turned away from God. But God is asking, he's saying, return to me. Give everything back to me. And then God says, I will return to you. So that as we give our lives to Jesus, or if we've turned away from God, if we're not serving him right now, that God, he wants us to come back to him and return back to him and give our everything to him. And that as we give to God, as we spend, give our time to him, our finances and tithes and offerings, that he in, in return will give back to you more than you could ever think or even imagine. And an overflow of things and, and blessings that you can't even imagine. I know that uh, there's times, you know, in our lives that we get busy and or we get focused on uh, work or school or the kids or whatever it takes our time or our attention, and it happens to all of us. But, um, but God, he wants to put us first. We know the scripture in Matthew 6, it says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added to you. And that's saying as we put Jesus Christ first in our lives, in our prayer time and in our offerings, our tithes, and in, in putting him above even our family, that as we seek him first, that all these other things will be added to us, that he will get multiply your time, he will multiply your finances, he will multiply blessings and just peace and joy in your home. And I've just found that if I can just take that special time with him, that it's like my day can just flow a little bit better. But if I run out the door, I'm rushing, and you know, I may be praying in the car, but it's, you know, sometimes, you have a good day, but it's not like when you just take that special time out and say, okay, God, I put you first today and I need you first. And that he is always there, right there to, uh, to bless you. I know sometimes at work, um, when I work, um, we'll, we'll just start the day off in, in prayer. I'll say, okay, let's hurry and pray for a few minutes and before we get busy. 
and it's amazing how those days that we don't pray, it's not the smoothest or best day, but it seems like when we do pray, it's like the day just kind of flows smoother than it, it usually does. But um, I know that as we seek God first, as, it, as we put him first, that he is faithful to take care of all the other things that we have need of. But I just want to encourage you today that if you are, um, if you're in need, I mean, uh, there's a lot of needs that we have. We're a needy people and we need God. And that's how God wants us to be. He wants us to need him or desire him. And it, it says that God, he's a jealous God and he wants our attention. I mean, we are made to worship. We're made to, to praise him and to live for him. And um, God wants us to be in need, to ask him, and that he is faithful to prove that um, he will answer our prayers and he's right there to answer us in every need that we have. But God wants to meet your need wherever you are right now. I just believe that God wants to, to, to touch you and to uh, meet you. Um, if it's physical healing, if it's in your salvation, if you want to give your heart to Jesus today, or, or if it's in your finances, you're, you may be struggling right now, especially if you've lost a job or not being able to work as much at this time. But God, he wants to provide for you, and he can make a way where there seems to be no way. We know that he can open that door of opportunity for you during this time that no man can shut. And I just want to pray right now. Um, I just feel led to just pray a, a prayer with you and to, um, to, to uh, just ask the Lord, whatever your need is right now, just, just call it out to him. And I just want to pray a prayer with you. Father, we come before you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God, for your, uh, for your blessings upon us, that you want your children blessed. And I believe that you have a special calling upon each of our lives. And Lord, we know that you provide our every need, that nothing is impossible with you. And I just pray right now for my brother and sister, Lord, as they are listening to this message, that God, you will open up the window of heaven and pour out your blessings upon them right now. God, if it's finances that they need, if it's a healing they need, Father, I'm asking of you, God, to touch them now, Father, that by the stripes of Jesus that they are healed. And God, that according to your riches that are in heaven, that you provide their need today. And I thank you, Father, for your peace and your joy and your strength in their lives today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, I just believe God has answered that prayer and that we hold fast to his promises. I know sometimes we want an answer as soon as we pray it, say, God, I need it now. And we're always wanting it right now. And there's things I'm believing God for right now. And I haven't seen it in the natural, but I know that it is answered in the spiritual, and I believe that it will be manifested, and I know that God wants to pour out his spirit upon you and upon me, and he wants to bless us. Um, I wanted to continue to read in Malachi and chapter 3 and uh, verse 2. It says, But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So here it's just talking about how God wants to purify us and that we are like gold and we are like the silver and how God... I know when they, they uh, purify these, these metals that they, um, they go through a process. And I believe that's how God wants to do with us. Just as I was talking earlier about how that he wants to reflect his glory in us. And we are like the gold and the silver. And he wants to purify us and take us through that purification. I know that my mom recently is talking about the plumb line and how God, he wants us to walk in, in that straight and narrow path and to walk in holiness and righteousness, and that he has called us the, as the body of Christ to be holy. So it's either you're going to choose uh, the Lord or choose the enemy, and whichever way you choose you, um, to serve, is, is which you're, it's not he wants you to walk um, 
kind of on the line of, you know, this is okay, but this is okay, maybe. But God, he's wanting us, the body of Christ, to walk in holiness and righteousness before him. And he is so faithful to cleanse us as we come to him and we ask him, Lord God, purify me. Make me as pure gold and silver. God, purify my heart, purify my mind so that I can walk in holiness and righteousness. And we know that it's not in ourselves. We know that it's not in who we are, that it says that our righteousness is as filthy rags, but it's in through God as we ask him to come into our hearts to be the Lord of our lives, that it's his righteousness that is pure and it's holy and that he can purge those things out of our hearts, those things that may um, not be pleasing to him. And we know that he is so faithful. I know I, I, I try daily to come to him and say, God, if there is anything in my heart, if there's anything that's displeasing to you that I've said or that I've done, you know, God, reveal that to me by your Holy Spirit and just show me, Lord, if there's something that's not pleasing to you. And he will reveal those things to you and say, God, I'm sorry that I said this or I'm sorry that I did that. And he will purify you from and by his precious blood, that you can be pure and holy as he is holy. And I believe that's God's desire for us, to be washed in his blood and to walk in his spirit. Not that any of us are perfect, because we know that we're not, but we know that through Jesus Christ, that he was perfect, he did not sin, but God, that we as can ask him to come and cleanse us with his precious blood that we can walk in holiness and we can strive for perfection and to do what we know to do and to follow his word in obedience. But um, I just believe that God is uh, wanting to just to raise up the body of Christ during this time. And um, we know that we are living in the last days. And, and I know that there's script, the scripture says, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And we as the body of Christ are longing for God to come. And it, especially the way it seems at this time that the world is getting darker. But we know that God said as the world gets darker, that it's through Jesus that shines through us the glory of God, that our light be can become lighter. So we know that if you put the flashlight in the dark, that it's brighter and you can see it. And that's how God wants to use us as the body of Christ, as believers, that he wants us to shine. And when people are facing trouble, as they are now, and they're facing hard times, and um, that they may be facing uh, situations that they don't know where else to turn to, but we know who they can turn to is through Jesus Christ. And we have the answer that we can bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost and those who are in the darkness and the lies of the enemy that's saying, you know, certain things out here that are sin, that the enemy's saying, oh, these are okay. It's okay to do this and that. But we know what God's word says, and we know that God wants us to walk in, in righteousness and holiness, and that as the light shines in and through you and me, that we can be a light in the darkness, and we know that uh, we hold fast to the time that Jesus does come back, that we know that it's sooner than it was, and um, I know we, uh, we long for that day to be able to be able to live in the city of gold. And um, I know that my kids, I guess I talk about heaven a lot and we get excited about heaven. And, and uh, sometimes they're like, I just want Jesus to come back. And I'm like, well, God has given us life now on earth for a reason. And we are here now on earth for a reason. And that we don't want to cut that time short. And um, even, if, even when times are hard, that we know that God, he is right there and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us, that um, he is always with us to help us during um, the hard times and that he is so faithful. But we do long for that day and long for uh, the time that Jesus comes back for his children. And we just want that uh, revival to come now and for the, those that are lost that can come to know Jesus and uh, that we can all be uh, together in heaven soon. And um, I know we long for that day and we're excited uh, to be able to live eternity with Jesus Christ. And if you do not know God, all you have to do is just ask him and believe that Jesus died for you and he loves you and you, he just wants you to call upon his name and you can be saved today. And just, I just, uh, just encourage you today just to call upon Jesus and that he is there and he will answer you where you are today. 
And I just pray just a quick prayer that God, Father, that you will just minister to each and every need, Father God, today, that God, that um, if they um, are searching for you or they just don't have the answers, God, I ask you to just reveal those answers, God. Reveal yourself to them, that they will call upon your name and be saved and set free today, that, um, that Lord, that we can spend eternity in heaven together. And I just uh, believe that God, he's going to pour out his blessings upon you. I believe that he's wanting to open the windows of heaven and pour out a great mighty blessing upon you and your family. And we just hold fast to God's word, to his promises. And I just pray that God will bless you and that you will continue to grow in his mighty power and his love. Hello, I am Shantae Hawkman. Are you in an area in your life where you need a healing or a touch from the Lord? God wants to touch your body or to just even touch you emotionally and give you His peace that passes all understanding. We know that the Bible gives us many promises of God's healing power. In Isaiah 53, in verse 4, it says, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I believe that God wants to touch you today in a mighty way. We believe in God's word and in his promises. And I feel that we can just hold fast to his promises every day and to speak his word. I know that when my little boy was sick, that I just spoke the word over him and I said, Micah, you will live and not die and you will declare the works of the Lord. And I know that the word says that Jesus, he sent his word and Jesus is the word. God sent his word to heal all of, our, of us from our sicknesses and diseases. Can I pray with you today that God will touch your body wherever you are. It, the promise says that he will bring us peace. And it says that God, He even bore the grief and the sorrow that you may have today. That God wants to touch you mentally, physically, spiritually in every way. But let's pray. Father, we just come to you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister today. Father, wherever they are, God, you know their need. And Father, I'm asking of you to touch their bodies. Lord, to minister peace and joy and strength to their hearts today. Father, I thank you for a healing in their bodies that we can just hold fast to your promises that by Jesus stripes we are healed and we are whole. And Father, we thank you for your healing in my brother and sister today. Father, just touch their bodies by your power and by your might. And Father, we thank you for it that they are healed and they are whole. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We'll praise God. Please write to us or call and let us know what God has done for you today. And I'm believing and I stand fast in prayer for your healing and from a touch from the Lord. Amen.